Hello from Art Conspiracy, uh, or as we say here in Thailand, Sawadee uh, Ka. I'm Amy, and uh, this is part two, or at least the second segment in uh, an outing in Thailand. Uh, we went out again. Oh, my dog's barking at the gate. Hold on, be right back. I'm back. Don't you love dogs? I do. <laughs> I love my dog. Uh, okay, anyway, so we went on another field trip as we do weekly with my gang of fives. And uh, I, I, again, I, I got such a great uh, reception from the last one, I thought I'd share some more with you. Uh, the thing about drawing and painting or, or just, you know, being a visual artist, I'm telling you, the biggest benefit, one of the biggest benefits, is that you see better. You just see the world in this very heightened state, you know, especially when you're out looking for what you want to draw, you know, you're looking at shapes and you're looking at light and dark and color and texture and you're trying to, you know, you, you almost are imagining it as a work of art, you know, how you could take that information and make it into art. So you're really uh, looking in a way that is unusual. Um, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful benefit to being a sketcher and I highly recommend it. And it doesn't matter how good you are, that still, you still become, uh, you know, heightened, that, have that heightened awareness. So anyway, uh, we, we, we go out. So we, we, got, we got to a temple and right away, boom, I, I was like, all the bells and whistles were, were going off. And let me show you, show you. This was the first thing we saw. We were like in the parking lot and look at this Jedi. It's, it's just awesome, <laughs> uh, especially juxtaposed with these more modern houses. I mean, that, I think that's pretty cool, you know, that idea. I, I really like that. Here's a close up. I mean, how fun is this? I have not drawn it yet. And I didn't want to sit in the parking lot. So I, I, I didn't choose to draw or paint this, you know, that day we went, but I'm going to. I especially love the, you know, how it's weathered and broken and the plants are growing out of it. Like uh, that, that's just right up my alley. So um, that was the first thing I saw. I was like, yay, sign me up. And now look at this. This is the back of the temple. And what I think is so cool, these are golden sort of uh, statues of monks. But look at the blue and the yellow. It's reflecting, you know, what's behind it. And that's really gorgeous. And, you know, even I would love to try to paint that. Uh, even if I took the monk's head off, you know, and just had it be just the, the surface of this, it's just so beautiful. I don't know, I, I might paint that someday. Anyway, here's a monk sitting here. They had some sort of festival going on that day and there was a lot of people and um, a lot of activity. And again, because my tie is not so good, um, I often don't know what's happening, but uh, it's, it's, you always feel very welcome at these uh, festivities. Uh, even though you're not Thai, you always feel welcome. And we walked around and looked at things. And then we ended up going off and finding a quieter place to work. Um, here's some worshipers. Again, a wonderful subject to draw. And uh, I may draw this later just from my photographs. That's the thing, you know, we were looking for something that we want to sit down and draw or paint. We're also always taking photos. My photo reference library is like, backed up for years and years. I will never be able to paint everything that I've, I'm thinking about painting. Now check this guy out. <laughs> this is so fun. Um, and a lot of Thai temples, they have these realistic levels of realism. Um, of monks that were, you know, uh, revered and have passed on and they have these statues of them. Sometimes they're very, very lifelike, like they're made of polyurethane or something, but they look very real. And in fact, you'll come into the temple and you'll think it's real for a minute, which is kind of pretty spooky. But anyway, and then you have more abstract ones. This one's obviously he's gold and he's uh, simplified a little bit, but they they have the glasses on, which I absolutely love. Um, let me just show you a little bit too. Look here, there's a whole row of them. I think my guy was right here, down here on the row. Anyway, there's a whole row of them, a whole bunch of these guys. Um, now here's the deal. If I painted this or drew this, it would, people, it would be confusing. Like people wouldn't know what they were seeing 
it's like, is this a gold person? Is this a person painted, you know, gold finger? Like what, what's happening? Um, in a photograph, you, you get it. It's like more uh, believable, but in a, in a painting, this would look strange, I think. Plus I, I sort of tend not to want to paint things that are already art. I like to paint things that are not art already and I make them art. Now look at this, this is the top of a different Teddy, it's just so cool. It's so wonky and uh, wabi-sabi. Um, I, I, just, I just loved it. Anyways, I took this picture. So some things we see in the temple too are just pure inspiration. I mean, I would not paint this obviously, but it inspires me. You know, that strange perspective is a little bit off. There's murals in most of the temples to look at, which is uh, really fun. Um, here's something else that I really love. This is, uh, you know, a bas relief, a, a high relief sculpture, and it's got the gold leaf sort of stuck on it here and there. You know, people buy the gold leaf and they put it on. It looks like chocolate to me. <laughs> Shows you where my, where my head is at. Um, and again, I wouldn't paint this, but I love this idea of the gold sort of on top of a surface. So I, for me, it's inspiration for a texture or an idea. Um, I actually have this idea to do some objects that are not sacred, like a toaster, but have like gold leaf stuck to it. Uh, anyway, stay tuned for more of my crazy ideas. Um, okay, so here I am in the temple. Again, as usual, I've got all these amazing things that I can paint. And what do I pick? Whoops, wrong button. This is what I did. <laughs> um, this is similar to the one I did last week, uh, which was had a scooter, two scooters. But uh, what I love is the, the negative space, the light negative space and all the crazy activity of these plants and the umbrella and the bicycle and Anyway, so this is what I ended up painting. And this is my first round. Now, I just want to show you, I, I don't have any background in. I just have a light pencil drawing, which is what I'm going to paint right now while you're here. Um, because right now, without that, without any background, it just looks like air. And I want it to look like a wall, which is what it is. So I can't just leave it blank. I, I want to do something with it. And I'm going to make sort of an overall, another layer of dark value on my positive space. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and it shouldn't take me just but a few minutes. So if you wanna stick around, I would love to have you. All right, I'm gonna pause and get my paints out. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm back. Uh, I wanna um, uh, talk to you a couple, little bit about materials um, and, and strategy. So I have some big areas that I am going to be painting, but very lightly, but you know, I, I, I'm going to use a big brush. So I got my beautiful new big brush. Look at this. It's uh, two inch, I think. Yep. Two inch. Anyway, this is gorgeous. So imagine if I'm trying to, you know, get out a little uh, color with this big old brush. So what I'd have to do is like use the corner maybe and like really work it. Anyway, if, you, if you're at the point where you have some big, beautiful brushes, what you wanna do is get yourself a couple of little side dishes. Uh, it's hard to tell, but this is like a blue uh, Payne's gray base, and this is a sepia base, and it's a big puddle here. And this is much more appropriate for mixing some color and uh, using a big brush. So. That's a good strategy, you know, and you can, if you need more water, you can just sort of spray in here and fill it up or whatever. But I always have a couple pots of neutral type colors and then you can use them too to mix and neutralize some of your colors in your other trays too, your smaller trays. So these are like just little wells of some neutral colors that are gonna come in handy for what we're gonna do. So let me start. Um, I'm thinking about my strategy. Do I do the background first or do I do the anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to go for the, the background. So let me warm up. I wet my big old brush. And the other thing about using a big brush is it really soaks up a lot of paint, you know, so <laughs> don't be surprised. 
uh, when you mix up a big puddle and then all of a sudden it whoosh, whoosh, it's gone. All right, so I got I got some paint. Oh, I went I went not for the background. Sorry, I completely did the opposite of what I just said I was going to do. So I have a green. So I'm going to use my big brush anyway, and I'm going to do look a veil of color. Look at that! Ah, oh, so wonderful. All the texture is still there underneath. That's the beauty of watercolor is that you can do these wonderful layers. Uh, just using a little tip of my brush to get some more texture. Look at that, so fun. Just one more dark. Now I'm going to add a little bit more of the warm color up here, but I'm going to let it dry a little bit so that it doesn't smoosh. Smoosh is a very sophisticated art term. And I, I'm leaving, you can, I don't know if you can tell, but there's like little puddles that form from my brush. So I'm just mindful of where they are. And if I need another brush, you know, a different kind of brush to come in, to see them and push them around, show them who's boss. I can do that. I can also take, I'm gonna take a even darker green, now that I'm here. Uh, and I'm gonna go even darker at the bottom, but in a more textured way, more layered way than the big brush that just kind of covered everything. I'm also separating out this tree from this one by putting a dark edge next to it. Do you see that? So this is a little bit lighter. Just separating that out. Ooh, I like this. I like creating textures with my brush. Just, I'm just letting it bounce. Get some more dark on the bottom of this one too, because that's kind of how it was. And if I don't like the texture particularly, which I, I like it, but I can push it, move it, do some stuff with it. Okay, so I'm gonna take a round brush, my big round brush, and I'm gonna dip it in my blue, light blue little base bucket. And I'm gonna do a little bit more dark with my motorcycle or yeah, my scooter. Again, I just, I'm just increasing the contrast. So yeah, I can still see my line work and my values in here, but I'm just, I want everything a little bit darker. Even my yellow. And I'm picking up now, I'm picking up the sepia, which is the warm version. And I might do some darker in my tree. So I'm just up in the ante. And even for my sort of the implication of my cast shadows, because what I love is all of these forms are united. And they form this rectangle, which is kind of cool. And that puddle to shadow to be grassy and uneven. There we go. Oh yeah, getting better and better. Okay, good. What else? <clears throat> Switching back to the blue darker blue and I'm going to do my signage. And because I'm working with very loose paint, I mean very wet, it's really puddling and that's good, but you just kind of got to watch it and see if you like how it's puddling. And if you don't, then push it around.
And what I also am demonstrating is you can use this big old brush, but it's got a tiny little tip. And so if you're being delicate, look at this, you can do a little teeny tiny line with a big old fat brush. Just takes a little patience and concentration. Okay, I'm gonna pick up a little dark red. So I want to darken my umbrella also. And you can see I'm, I'm painting it unevenly, even in that second layer. Just to make the paint alive. Really dark. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you put down something and it seems really extreme to you. And then it dries and it moves and it's like, oh, really wasn't that big a deal anyway. You can't be timid. Go too far. You know, that's better than not going far enough. Trust me. Now, here we go. That's, that's pretty brazen. But I'm just going to take a brush and just look at that. Block out something. Just soften a little bit. But now I got texture, I got something interesting going on back there, you know? Okay, I'm gonna let this dry a wee little bit. Um, actually, before I do that though, I'm gonna do, this is red up here. I'm gonna do a very soft, this is the building. Pretty light. A little something on the side. Just going to start to suggest what else is going on. and create the illusion of a wall here. I also just noticed that I have just a light suggestion of plantness over here, which also makes this look more like a wall now instead of air. So let me put that in. Again, I'll put it in the base color. Then I put in some darker tones while it's wet, just to make it interesting. Let me push it around a little bit. Put a puddle at the bottom. If I got some paint more, I, I push it around, I distribute. Okay, good. Oh yeah, it's happening. All right, and then also have a little bit of gray. A little bit of gray and I went into my neutral pot over here that I showed you earlier. And this is kind of, again, reinforcing that we're looking at a building. You know, at this point, I could almost not even paint anything here because just the edges are really starting to illustrate that we got a building here, got a building action also. Look at this little blue sky over here. And over here. I might not have to do anything in the middle. I'm not sure. We'll see. It's always an adventure. You know, I don't know how it's going to play out until I get in here. Lock the edge of that. I want that to be pretty subtle. It can be a little stormy stormy sky there we go oh, a little too stormy actually really i just recently like this effect of making a really sharp puddle let's see if i can do it okay i'm just going to let that sit a little bit longer then i'm going to blot it and the edges will be sharper, crisper. We'll see. Okay, 
Put that back in. Four. Okay, maybe a, eh, let's do a little bit of that red that's in the plants up here. There's a little touches of red tree, which is so cool at the top where it kind of bends over. So I just want to reinforce that. Picking up different reds, just play in. And it's slightly wet. So the paint is moving around a little. Yeah, just good. This creates a little bit more interest. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. Other than these guys, which I'm gonna blot in a second. Um, and then I'm gonna do the background. So I'm gonna pause Be right back. Okay, this puppy is not completely dry. So I am risking it all for you, but I'm, I'm tired of waiting. <laughs> well, I'm tired of waiting for it to dry. Um, anyway, so here, I want this to be cream colored. I'm gonna, I decided to add a little bit of color, but a little bit of touch. Like I think maybe you see this as a building, but anyway, I just, I like this idea of dirtying it up a little bit. I mixed a little bit of yellow ochre, nice loose yellow ochre. I also have some Chinese white. So I can make it super, super pale, which is what I'm gonna to try to do. So I'm gonna be a little bit more careful than I might. So I'm picking up a little bit of my yellow. So it's super, super light. And I'm also having a tissue handy. And I'm gonna just start very discreetly I mean, if you if you if you sponge it off too soon, then you get rid of it all. Just let it sit there for a minute, maybe. But this is how you find out how long you wait. You try it, and you come in with some more, and then meanwhile you're creating texture by doing that. So I think up oh, there might be a little bit of spreading if other things are not quite dry. But you know what? That's okay. It's always. Again, kind of interesting to see what's going to happen. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I, I think adding a little color was a good call. So it's really light. It's very fun. I definitely don't want to get my red disturbed. And down here is kind of cool because my license plate here is white. I actually should probably do a little darker green next to it so you really see it. I'll do that as the pièce de résistance. Oh, oh, I got some spreading. Oh, no problem. Got the magic tissue handy. Blotting. Being a little bit careful because some of, like I said, some of this paint is still wet. But I'm just ending up with a little, like almost like a patina of the yellow. Very discreet. Good. Better get some up here. Oh yeah, and I put some there, put some more down here. You know, when you paint, you should never think of just one area that you're working on. You're always thinking about the whole thing and what's happening. All right, there we go. So then a little bit in here, I'm gonna do what I just said. I mean, it's this kind of little tiny stuff at the end. It might not matter at all. So, you know, I don't know. But I'm gonna do it. Try to get a little dark green. Mixing with my paints gray. So 
I'm going to have a little wah, darker green. Look at that. Now my license plate pops out. Running into the wet yellow. Got a collision going on. That's right, it's gonna dry. Now, I, I like that, I mean, it's a little bit darker while I'm here, see that? I'm like, oh, I, maybe I can put this dark somewhere else. Add more texture to the bike. And on and on and on. Okay, I wanna show you one more thing before I go, and that is, Here, uh, you know, was my, my piece and I worked on this for a while. And then at some point I turned around and I saw something that I liked even better. Was this, <laughs> this is my friend Winnie over there painting and just her little nest of art supplies and her shape was so interesting to me. And look at the shadow on the wall. It's, it's a, casting a shadow from the temple. Oh, and the naga on the, you know, the side or the top of the roof. Anyway, that I thought that was pretty cool. So um, then, you know, at the last minute, I ended up, you know, working on her. So there you go. So I have a whole nother painting that I have to do out of this. In addition to the stuff I showed you earlier, that I got lined up. I got stuff lined up for days. So here's what I suggest. Start sketching if you're not already and get out in the world and, and you know, work on heightening your senses and your, just your, your vision. Uh, Cause there's a whole lot out there and don't just look for pretty things, look for things that you would normally overlook like the bicycles in the corner or the wall or the, you know, I'm, I'm always looking for things that people would not ordinarily consider art subjects. So anyway. As I say, it's my story. I'm sticking to it. Amy at Art Conspiracy. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. See you soon. Bye. Leave a comment. You know what to do. <laughs>